Who enjoyed the program tonight? Yeah. Covered a lot of ground, didn't it? Um, I might just, we, we, we did our online poll and it was, I haven't seen a poll that tight in all the polling that we've done. I might just, just turn the camera around, I'll put the hands up at the back here. Hands up, should gambling be illegal? Hands up, if it should be illegal. Hands up, if it should not be illegal. Okay. More people think it, 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 should, be, it should be illegal. A lot of discussion tonight as well about, um, about the, the impact uh, that the AUKUS deal is going to have and the money that's being spent. Who here thinks that we're spending too much? You, you, yes, I might just ask... Just come here. Thank you. Um, yeah, I do believe that we are spending too much on the AUKUS deal. Um, I'm a Labor Party member, but I must say that my feelings among the party on the ground is that they're not particularly impressed with how much money is being spent especially considering um, the cost of living crisis and the government not committing to uh, cutting the stage three tax cuts that are going on um, and that if we can find $368 billion to spend on submarines, why can we not make those stage three tax cuts happen? Who else feels the same way? Who, who has a different point of view? Who believes that we should be spending the money because we do believe that there is an imminent threat and Australia needs to defend itself. Who, who supports the idea of spending this money on the submarines? Yeah, one up here. We'll just go up the back here. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an interesting evening with a lot of different thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I agree that um, we need to be looking forward into the future to see what kind of uh, threats that are possible out there. And we don't want to turn a blind eye to say that things won't happen. We do need to be diplomatic about a lot of things uh, and make sure that bridge, as been mentioned before, is always open and always uh, look upon that as the first choice. But we do need to protect ourselves because we do want our tax cuts, we do want all that, but ultimately our security needs to be first. That's my opinion. Thank you. Who believes... Hands up again. We, there's been a lot of discussion around the potential for conflict, particularly with China. Who believes there is an imminent threat, that China represents a threat to Australian security? Hands up. Very few. Hands up if you don't believe that there is an imminent threat at the moment. Yeah, that's interesting. Much more people. Th there, was, there was a question tonight. We had that extraordinary story, didn't we, um, of Alison and Dave and, and what he's going through. There's a gentleman down the front with a lot of medals on his chest. And so I wanted to get your thoughts about this, about veterans and whether you believe veterans are being properly cared for. Yeah, um, I'm Ray James and um, I'm the State President of RSL New South Wales. The RSL has been around for a hundred odd years and we've been looking after veterans since World War I. And it's quite available around the states. Um, we've got a national uh, organisation that all states are a part of. And we've got, uh, just in New South Wales alone, we've got 330 sub-branches that look after veterans in their local communities. We've also got um, National Centre for Veterans Care out at, um, like a McDonald's house, out at Concord, where veterans from the bush can come into to, uh, the city to see their clinicians and all that sort of stuff. And we've also got uh, a veterans centre at Nara that 21 sub-branches support, and RSL in New South Wales sub-branches support that financially. And also uh, in kind... Um, is, it, is it enough, Ray? When you heard the story tonight from Dave and Alison, how did you feel as someone who's, who's, who's been a veteran? I know about the centre he's talking about, but um, RSL's picked up all those, um, um, all those clients from that, uh, from that um, mm. um, veteran centre on the north, northern beaches. Mm. So they're being looked after and uh, they just need to know where to go. And let, I'll tell you what, there's out, it's out there on social media and, and right across the board. Mm. Thank you for that and th thanks for the work you do. Where's Maddie? Where's Maddie? There you are. Now, Maddie, you've got another question that we didn't get to and Geoffrey Robertson has <laughs> kindly stayed behind. This is going to spark some discussion. Yeah, Give Geoffrey a... He's been very patient. <laughs> What's the question, Maddie? It depends which one. <laughs> the $5... Oh. Yeah. Why should we care who is on the face of our currency? <laughs> this, is, this is the $5 note. And, Jeffrey, you have an answer to this, why we should care. 
I think we should care. Uh, Prince Charles, now King Charles, is a very nice fellow. I know him, he's of my generation. He's a baby boomer, an upper-class English baby boomer. But what's he doing on Australian currency? Don't we have inspiring Australians that we could put on? So who would you put on? Uh, well, the most inspiring person I have met, and I've met a lot of very inspiring people, like Vaclav Havel and you know, so on and so forth. But when I was 20, I was president of the Sydney University SRC, and I got to know a woman called Faith Bandler. Mm. And she led the 1967 referendum. She was, her father had been a slave, a Kanaka. He'd been imported for, to work on the Queensland plantations from Vanuatu. And Faith grew up. She was an amazing leader. I think she was mentored by Jessie Street, who was an extraordinary Australian woman. But Faith herself developed and she led but she worked for anti-discrimination against Aboriginals, and then she was projected as leader of the 1967 referendum. The most successful referendum and of the past in Australia. It was indeed. You look at the old photographs, there's Faith with Gordon Bryant, big Gordon Bryant, who was the Labour uh, Aboriginal Affairs spokesman, and Harold Holt. They were together, the three of them led us and the 91% of Australians voted to change the constitution to allow Aboriginals to vote and to be counted as Australians. It's incredible. It took till 1967. <laughs> what a, but that was very much Faith's doing. And I was on the board with her. She founded an organisation called Fakatsi, Mm. which was the Federation of Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders. And I used to... I went down to Redfern, where, of course, the a lot of Aboriginals live, and there were a lot of dissenting voices. Oh, we don't want change in the Constitution, Faith. We want the cops to stop bashing us up. And Faith would look these uh, dissenters in the eye and say, we want dignity, and that's what we get from changing the Constitution. So does Faith sound like a good idea on the $5 note? Yeah. Like a good lawyer, you've won them over, Jeffrey. <laughs> thank you so much for coming tonight. You've been, been fantastic. And thank you, Kate, thank you for sharing your story with us well, um, a, a, as well. It takes a lot to come and share those stories with us, and we really appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you coming along to watch. There's no program without you. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Thank you.